Are you getting in or not? So welcome, ladies. <laughs> Fantastic to have you. We're so excited to have this conversation. And I will throw my first question to Marianne. Um, Marianne, if you could tell us what drew you to tell the story of a near future in which abortion has become illegal. Well, you know, I've always, um, I've always, I've always been extremely passionate about human rights, and you know, more specifically, women's rights. Um, a couple of years ago, I would say two, three years ago, I started reading up on the subject quite a bit, and I watched numerous documentaries. There's one called Vessel, which is just a phenomenal documentary, and one called Reversing Row. And those two documentaries were really instrumental in, in writing this film for me. Um, you know, I wanted to sound the alarm about what was happening. Um, I would say undercover, you know, the, the agenda to eventually overturn Roe v. Wade in the United mm -hmm. States. But, you know, also in Canada, ac access to abortion isn't, <clears throat> isn't 100%. You know, um, there's, there's still this there's it's really ludicrous to me that we're still questioning the legitimacy of these these rights which you know i i really um i really feel are important to women and 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 people you know in general and we can see it with what's happening in texas and what's about to happen in, in mississippi um or in front of the supreme court tomorrow actually um mm -hmm. you know Mississippi is trying to asking the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. So that's yes. happening tomorrow. The decision will be, I think, end of June or something like that. But that's, you know, that's in the works right now. And, you know, these bans and restrictions have dire consequences on all women. Um, but they also disproportionately impact those who are low income, women of color, the LGBT people, and, and women who live in rural areas. So I, you know, for me, it was really you know, it was really, um, I felt a deep calling to talk about this. Um, yeah, so we started working on the film in 2018 and shot it last year. And as the film came out, you know, Texas came up with this ban. And now, you know, as I said, it's going in front of the Supreme Court. So it's really mm -hmm. scary to me. And, and Uso, can you tell us how you felt the first time you saw the uh, film? Oh my gosh, I was, <clears throat> absolutely, I can. I was deeply moved the first time I saw the film. I thought um, it was such a powerful piece of storytelling. And I think it did a really beautiful job of illustrating both the world we have come from as it relates to um, abortions and women and illegal practices surrounding that and the world that potentially awaits us if we make it our mission to um, remove the rights that have rightly been put in place to protect and support women. Um, the danger there, it's not a, it, I think what Marianne has done so brilliantly in this film um, and with Sophie and Charlotte who pro produced it, it, it doesn't tell the story of, oh, you know, if we reverse, say, Roe v. Wade here in the United States, that means the end of abortions. It just means that we're going back to practicing them illegally. And that's what this looks like. The danger of that. Right. The, this is what it will look, this is what it looks like, potentially, um, and, and in all likelihood. And um, that's, a, that's a worrisome future. And I thought it was shot beautifully. I think it did a really, really powerful job. Um, it was a powerful piece that really captured the lens of the female experience. You know, um, the POV is very sharply placed inside mm -hmm. the hand of the, what goes through the minds of the, both the practitioner, the female practitioner and mm -hmm. the patient. Um, that experience I think was really beautiful um, and, I was just moved and needed to be a part of it when asked. It, there was no other yeah. word for them, yes. And, and so you were sensitive to the topic before you were asked to be a part of the, the movie? I'm sensitive to the to any topic that relates to the rights of any person being uh, removed or restricted mm -hmm. or oppressed. Um, and as a woman, I'm particularly sensitive to the subject um, of freedom 
and the mm -hmm. right to choose the conversation of choice and that one's right, fundamental right might be removed is one that immediately sparks me to passion. Uzo, you, you, you're very close to any social issues. You want to affect change. That's what you want to do. So with this film, what are you hoping people are going to take away? Yeah, I think with this film, I'm hoping that people, um, again, see the, the gravity of the issue, you know? And um, even though I live in the United States, I think people, and we, as Marianne already mentioned, have much of this conversation currently brewing within our legal system. I think uh, people will be able to watch this film and understand the global effect of um, this conversation, you know? This is a movie that's coming out from our friendly neighbor of the North. And I think it speaks a lot to the, that, two, that two people from two different countries are passionate about this story, which means there are people elsewhere around the globe who are also going to be moved by this story and potentially impacted by mm -hmm. changes or, or not seeing growth happen, progress happen and you know, where they're from. So I'm, I'm hoping that people will walk away with understanding um, the real consequences and gravity that sits in the way of a lot of women. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that women, uh, people will recognize the real universal nature that this story has um, insofar as it touches every one mm -hmm. and have an effect on it beyond. It's not just a uniquely Western story. It's not a uniquely American story. It is something that exists and is happening, could happen anywhere in the globe. We're very talking universal. Winter, very universal. You can talk about it as a story that's play, taking place in the summer, excuse me, in the winter uh, in Canada, but this could very easily be set in a desert somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa as well. Uh, we've got an interesting question here in the chat. Wasn't it intentional to have the cast and crew of this film predominantly female? Who wants to take that question? I love it. I'll take it. Um, I think it was. I think it was because I like. I you know I'm. I you know I'm. I'm also an actress. I really I love. I love bringing interesting female characters to the screen. I think you know we're seeing a, a lot more interesting characters, more diverse characters but I think there aren't enough. So for me, mm -hmm. it was like, I didn't want the doctor. At first I had a version, right? Uh, Sophie and Charlotte, I had a version where the doctor yeah. was a male, yeah. the man. And then I was like, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me that the guy, that it's a guy who's like trying to save this woman um, or mm -hmm. trying to help her. And, and, I, and I do feel like, you know, I think men have to be part of this conversation, but I, you know, it's also like we're restricting what these bands are doing is restricting uh, women's bodies. So I think, you know, women have to be at the forefront of these conversations and these um, um, these fights, if I can if I can call it that. So. Um, so, yeah, so I eventually, you know, we talked about it. I talked it with Sophie and Charlotte and we decided that it was much more powerful to have these two strong women on screen fighting for something that they really believe in. Um, yeah. Uh, Sophie and Charlotte, uh, how was it like working with the director? <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was, uh, of course, it was amazing because Marianne is an amazing person. She's an amazing and really talented director. And we actually met her in um, 2014. We produced her, her first uh, short film, Saccage, or Rensac that uh yeah that we shot in 2014 and marianne is is someone that knows where she wants to go what she wants and she's really proactive and like for this short film she wanted to start directing and she went to see a scriptwriter and she came to us and she said i want to direct i want to do a film and we we made it together in a very short time period and it was like the beginning of a very beautiful like relationship and and collaboration and we've built some a very base, um, a very strong base in terms of of communication and and on trust and and like we we understand each other so much easier after all those years and and we can like understand without even speaking and and it's truly a plus when 
when we do a film and I truly believe that it reflects in the project and in the final results. Yeah. And I think as, as Charlotte said, Marianne knows what she wants. Uh, she's demanding with her team, but I think mostly with herself. Mm -hmm. And she's she's a go-getter. So being by her side with that energy really motivates you to like uh, to push things far, to surpass yourself all the time. And and Charlotte and I are that kind of people too. So having this energy and that wonderful woman along uh, along the way is, I think, I think really works well for us and. Plus, she also has a caring side. She has a great mm -hmm. sensibility and empathy for others. So I think it's a real plus when you have a strong personality to have those qualities too, because I think you can see and feel things that many people don't. And mm -hmm. that's what Marianne have. And like Charlotte said, we had communication, admiration, I think professionally, yeah. but also personally. So <laughs> it's not our first collaboration. I'm sure it will not be our last because we we love, 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 love working with her. Me too. Well, me too. knowing Marianne, well, it's Society of Mutual Admiration. <laughs> love it. Uh, now, the title of the movie, can, can someone tell me about the title? Did you have alternative titles? What does the title mean? I, I looked it up, but I, I'd love to know more about the title. We had many titles. Uh, it was a really, we, we all hate finding titles. So, you know, it's, yeah. Um, Hard process. So it's a, it's a yeah. long process and we just want to get it over with. So we had, the first title was 16 because she was pregnant. She was 16 weeks pregnant in the first version. And then it was Water Lilies, <laughs> which we really didn't yeah. like. Uh, <laughs> And we were like, why? We liked it for five water? minutes. I think we liked it for five minutes. It was on some documents and then. Yeah. And we were like, we're stuck with water lilies now. <laughs> um, and then Prima was, you know, I think we wanted to find a title that represented the coldness of the film and just like, you know, so Prima means frost. But mm -hmm. we were like, we're not going to call the film frost. That sounds like frozen. It's, you know, it's not yes. appropriate. It's just. So we kept it, we kept Freema in, in English as well. But Freema means a thick fog that turns into ice as it falls, which really represented for us um, what, what we're going through right now when it comes to these rights, where we're going, oh no, it's fine, everything's fine. But you know, it, it takes like just a snap of a finger and then we can start losing those rights. So, it, so I, I think, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think the metaphor was also really, um, really, was really interesting for us for the film. Beautiful, was, beautiful. Yeah. Uso, can you walk us through how you were contacted and convinced to do this? Yes, well, I, I, convincing was not needed. It was not necessary. I, I can <laughs> tell you that. Um, I know Marianne um, previous to this and um, an email came dropping by um, for myself and um, my executive, uh, Dan DeNicola, uh, over at Maynon. And he said, he just mentioned briefly uh, the synopsis in it, um, along with my agent, um, Jessica, who, who, who had passed it on. And I hadn't even watched the film yet, but the synopsis was so capturing. I was like, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, let me just watch it to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, and immediately when I watched it, I found myself entirely captured by it. I thought it was powerful. I thought it was beautifully shot. I thought it was smart. I thought it had a, a weight to it with at the same time a heart. And so, yeah, there was no, pitch needed the story I think quite frankly sells itself um, and tells itself um, and I think what these women have done so exceptionally um, with this short was it was just capturing it was it, it was incredibly mm. impressive and Marianne you know just to piggyback on the kudos that have already been put onto her they are all well deserved She's a lovely woman. 
really, really exceptional talent, um, an incredible director with a voice that is necessary. So, uh, absolutely. Just... And how has the public reacted to the movie? Oh, I mean, we've had we've had a lot of really great feedback. Um, we're really conscious that it's not an easy film to watch, and I think it's even harder when you're sitting in an audience, like in, in like a theater. So we've we've had the experience of watching it with people a couple times. We've had mm -hmm. someone, I think we had someone faint at one point and- mm -hmm. Oh, really? For some More person, than once, actually. Yeah, and for some people it's, it's difficult. Like if it's something that you've just been through or you have, you know, like tra a traumatic experience when it comes to abortion and abortion or, you know, um, so, so that's been, I think we weren't expecting that. Um, but that's also what we set out to do is, is talk about the real issue was not try and sugarcoat it. So, um, and we, we did have an experience in a Q and A where somebody was telling us that we, we were talking about killing babies and <clears throat> which was, which was really, um, challenging. Um, and, you know, I said, I, I respectfully disagree. We don't have the same, you know, point of view about that. And, you know, I'm, I just want to say we're not talking about babies. We're talking about embryos and and fetuses. And I really believe, and we really believe that um, that women, you know, women are going to have abortions. The bottom line is women are going to keep having abortions. The question is exactly are they going to survive from those abortions or are they going to die from it? It's like 25 million abortions, illegal abortions per year around the world. And approximately 70,000 women die from these illegal abortions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really believe in protecting women. I, I believe that women should have a choice uh, when it comes to uh, what they do with their bodies. Uzo, what's the, what's the atmosphere like in, in the States around these topics? Because they're being discussed right now. And, and, and how are women feeling? Yeah, you know, I think it's um, it's state by state right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Marianne already mentioned the state of Texas and Mississippi who are confronting these uh, topics right now of late. You know, Georgia has had their own debate over the subject, uh, Louisiana as well of late. Um, it's it's becoming a it's a it's a it's a dividing issue and it's one mm -hmm. under hot debate. You know, but and we are living at a time, I think, uh, as a global society, that we are really being forced to look at how we want to take this next phase of life, this next chapter. How do we want to um, exist as a human family? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a film like this becomes important to be entered into the conversation because it's easy, I think, to discuss things in the abstract by not putting a face to something. And what Freemus does is it puts a face to the conversation that is mm -hmm. at hand right now. This is a conversation that is very, this is a film that is timely happening um, as we're watching our world change before our eyes. And, mm -hmm you know, in some ways it almost feels cautionary, um, you know, um, because we are looking at what we, if we're saying no to something, what we're actually saying yes to might be exactly. saying. Mm -hmm. um, and so in this time when we're having sharp debate over this very subject um, here in the States, I hope that as many people as possible um, can see this film come to know this film so that they can really decide on how we want to progress forward. What do you want the viewers to take away from this male character? Was it intentional to give him little screen time? Hmm. Um, yes, it was intentional. Well, I did have a version at one point where he was part of the conversation a little bit more. Um, I didn't want him to be, um, I wanted him to have depth. I didn't want him to be just like a bad man who's against abortions. Um, you know, I think when we start, you know, we're so polarized when it comes to these issues that we, you know, it's difficult to have a conversation with people who don't believe the same thing as you do. 
you know, for me, the bottom line is nobody should tell me what I should do with my body. That's the bottom line. So, but I understand that people aren't, you know, comfortable with abortions or don't like abortions or don't believe in abortions. That's fine. Like we can have discussions about that, like philosophical discussions. I just don't think that that should become legislation. So, um, so I wanted Jacob to be, you know, I wanted him to be in love with his wife and to just, but, but for him, he's stuck in this society where, you know, abortion is illegal and he's somebody who would never, um, who, who would never go against the law. So, um, in that relationship, it puts, I wanted it to put a strain on that relationship, but I wanted her to go through with it, with it anyway, because that's how she survives as a woman, as an individual. So, and the story is, is through her, it is through her perspective, right? So adding him in there for like a whole five, 10 minutes would have been a different story, basically. Right. It right. Story right. I wanted to tell. Yeah. Because this affects actual women, actual, you know, people. It's not just, it's not just a numbers game. You know, we talk about 25 million, 70,000 women dying, but these are people that have, you know, children that have families, like these are real, um, these are real lives that are impacted. So, so that was, that was what we set out to do.